Well, good morning. Welcome to chapter 28. In chapter 26, we learned all the basic grammar related to participles. And in chapter 27, we learned one specific kind of participle. We looked at participles built on the present tense stem, and therefore participles that describe an ongoing action. In chapter 28, we're going to learn another kind of participle. It's going to be different in form a little. It's going to be different in meaning a little. But most of what you've learned in chapters 26 and 27 carry over into 28. In other words, there's not that much new to learn in chapter 28. All right? The chapter is a little long, but that's because the paradigms are getting longer. So, Lusantes. What does that look like to you? Yeah, tell me what you do recognize in this form. Okay, you see a tense formative, you see sigma alpha, so you know you're in what tense? Arist. What else do you see? You see case endings, epsilon sigma, so you know you're in a third declension. What's in the red? Okay, you got a new tau. In other words, the same morpheme that we had with present participles, right? It kind of looks a little different in this form when it's all put together, but it's still the same active participle morpheme. Now, what you can't tell from the loo, because it doesn't change its form of its stem in the different tenses, is that you're looking at an aorist stem, but what's missing? Very good. <laughs> yeah, there's no augment. Why do you think there's no augment on an aorist participle? Right, right. Because an augment indicates past time. Participles don't indicate absolute time. And therefore, you have to get rid of the augment. So if you were to parse Lusantes, you would say that it's an aorist, active, participle, nominative, plural, masculine. Okay? Now, this obviously is the first aorist participle. We'll look at second aorist in a second. This whole process of unaugmenting aorist stems can become a little tricky. And again, the key to it is not only to understand what's going on, but to know your vocabulary very, very well. If you have a word like a first aorist, like luo, you're used to seeing elusa, for example, first person singer in the aorist. When it goes to the participle luson test, it's pretty clear that it's lost its augment, hasn't it? I mean, you would look at it and you see the sigma alpha, tense form, it's got to be an aorist. Oh, where's the augment? But when you have a second aorist, it gets a little trickier. Lombano has a second aorist, elabon, and when it goes into the aorist participle, you get labontes. But if you don't know your vocabulary, you may not recognize that the augment's dropped, and you may go looking for a lexical form, labo. You won't find it. And you go, oh, that's, that's when the vocabulary really becomes important. And where it really gets tricky is when you have a lengthened vowel for an augment in the aorist, like aelthon, when it unaugments, it doesn't drop the vowel, it shortens the vowel. In other words, the augmentation process is just reversed. So if you see elthon tests, you may go look for a verb eltho, and it may just take a bit to click in. So the key on unaugmenting when it comes to second aorist forms, is to know your vocabulary well. And if the second aorist is augmented by a vowel being added, that vowel is going to be dropped. And if that second aorist is augmented, well, actually, it's not just a second aorist. It'll happen in the first aorist, too, won't it? If the aorist is augmented by lengthening the initial vowel, then that vowel will shorten in the participle. OK? So you see the process? The key is to understand what unaugmenting is and then to know your vocabulary. That's pretty much it for the chapter. Let's just go through some other forms, though. But that's most of what you need to know. What's that? Not an error's passive. Right. Now, you don't forget your indicative verbal grammar. Errists have distinct forms for the active and the middle and the passive. 
Here you have the sigma alpha and no augment. So at that point, you know that you have an eris active or an eris middle. But then you have the participle morpheme men, which is always a middle or a middle passive morpheme. And so this has to be an aorist middle participle, dative singular feminine in this case. This, by the way, is the advantage of not just memorizing paradigms, but learning how verbs go together. Otherwise, these are hundreds of inflected forms you'd have to memorize. You're welcome. Lucentis. What's that? Right. Now you're in an aorist passive. You have the tense formative, although what's happened to the tense formative? Yeah, the eta has shortened to an epsilon. It's just oblaut. This is just what we learned in chapter 7. Lagas, lagu, lago, where the omicron lengthens to an omega. All that oblaut says that in Greek, vowels can lengthen, they can shorten, and they can drop out. So this is, again, you have no augment. So this is an aorist passive participle, nominative plural masculine. What's so important is to see how these things are going together. Did you catch the participle morpheme? It's the active participle morpheme. One of the things that you're going to find is that the aorist passive often uses active endings. So your new tau is your active participle morpheme, which is also used in the aorist passive. And then the appropriate case endings. So in terms of the six forms you need to memorize, the aorist active is sas, sasa, san, santas, sases, santas. You'll notice the change to go to the feminine. you notice that it has the alpha, eta shift from the nominative to the genitive. But those are the six forms. In the aorist middle, it's really simple. Samanas, figure it out. <laughs> Samana, Samane, Samanan, Samanu, Samane, Samanu. Straightforward, two, one, two, no surprises. The aorist passive is Thais, Thaisa, Then, Thentas, Thaisais, Thentas. Do you see why you have to learn the genitives along with the nominatives? Go back up to the active. How do you get to Sas? Well, easy. What happens the new tau when it's followed by your normal nominative singular case ending? Drops out. So sant s goes to sas. In the neuter, there's no case ending and the tau drops off because it can't stand at the end of a word. After that, it's regular. In the aorist passive, you have fent in the masculine and neuter. What's happened? Pretty much the same thing, hasn't it? that in the masculine, the case ending is sigma, so the new tau drop out, and the epsilon lengthens to epsilon iota. In the neuter, there's no case ending, and the tau drops off. In other words, these are all the rules you already know for pos and third declension words. They're just, you need to understand what's going on. So for the heirs passive, you just memorize, thes, thes, a thin, then toss, thes, thes, thin toss. Okay, quickly, let's move on to the second half of the chapter. There's very little here. What's balantes? Again, think through your grammar. Is this the lexical form that you memorized? No. The lexical form is balo with a double lambda. So here you can clearly see you're outside of the present tense system. And therefore, what do you have when you have beta, alpha, lambda? you have the second aorist of balo. So let's look at a couple of the second aorist forms just to make sure it's clear. They're formed pretty much the same way as first aorist, except for kind of in the middle. <laughs> in other words, you still have no one augment. You still have the aorist stem. It happens to be a second aorist stem and not a first, big deal. And you have the same morpheme. You still have new tau. So that much is the same between the first aorist and the second aorist. What's different, and you would expect this from your knowledge of the indicative verbal system, is that second aorists don't have tense formatives. Instead, they have a connecting vowel. The tricky thing, as I said earlier, is that when you're into the second aorist, if you don't know your vocabulary, it's going to look like a present because there's no augment, right? So what you have to do 
is know your vocabulary, look at the stem, say, is this the stem I memorized? No, I'm outside the present tense system. That's right, balo goes to ebalon, single lambda, in the aorist. So a second aorist participle is the unaugmented second aorist stem, a connecting vowel, the active morpheme, and the appropriate case endings. Genominoi, what's that? Aorist middle participle. Eris middle, read my lips, deponent. There you go. Okay, gamma vowel nu. What word is that? What root is that? Ginomai, not ginosko. Ginosko is gamma nu O class. All right, and ginao is double nu alpha contract. So gamma vowel nu is ginomai. You're outside of the present tense system because the vowel is not an iota, it's an epsilon. Ginomai is a middle deponent, so you have the unaugmented second aorist tense stem. You have the middle morpheme, and so you have an aorist middle deponent participle, nominative plural masculine. You have to be able to know how to put these things together. Otherwise, you won't believe how many charts you're going to have to memorize. Okay, it's much easier to know how to put these things together. And this last form is really just more information's sake. What is this? It's from grapho, but you have an epsilon. This is hard. This is a second aorist passive. Grapho has a second aorist passive, and so instead of having theta epsilon, like in the first aorist, the tense formative is simply the epsilon. Now, Everything is pretty normal there. The nice thing about these is I found out the other day of all the words that occur 50 times or more in the New Testament, none of them have second aorist passes. Or at least they never occur in the New Testament. So this form's never going to occur, but I just throw it up there just to be complete, I guess. So what are the six forms for the second aorist? Well, in the active, it's the same as the present. On, usa, on, antas, usais, antas. In the second aorist middle, it's amanas, carried out. And in the second aorist passive, it's ace, asa, en, and tas, aceis, and tas, which, of course, you'll never find in the New Testament right now. I mean, there are words that occur less than 50 times that do have second aorist passives, but that's second year Greek. In terms of meaning, recognize two things, pretty straightforward that the aorist participle does not describe a continuous action, it describes an undefined action. And if the participle is temporal, if it were present and while would make sense, you use while only with present participles, you use after with aorist participles. So most of the discussion has to do with form, but if you understand how they go together, it's not that big of a deal.